Tater. I'm Voltan for Voltage Productions, and I'd like to welcome you guys all back to the Flat World. So, uh, you may be wondering, Voltan, what, what's going on? This is in episode 6. What do you mean by episode 5.5? But, Voltan, what do you mean by practice episode? Simple, really. I need to get better at terraforming. For others, terraforming is pretty easy because they use Lightmatica. Which is a mod for nerds. But since I refuse to use Lightmatica in my world, essentially, my biggest hurdle is going to be terraforming, since I have to try and make it all look good while actually not, like, referring to any schematic to make things easier. Usually, the best way to make good looking landscapes is with mods like Axiom or something. But we're not using any of that, we're just going to use our hands. Hands are usually used for things I do at night. But for a terraforming project I have in mind, we're gonna need some mud. So for what I have in mind in the future of my world, I want there to be a big building that I'm just gonna be calling the Hexagon. And inside the Hexagon is essentially just going to be a bunch of farms. I wanna have a bunch of farms all in one place. And to get started, I'm just gonna build, I'm gonna get an outline going, okay? And then, what we're going to do after we get that outline going, is build the mud farm. Ooh. And no, none of this is going to stay is just dirt. Gotta love it when tutorials have very promising builds but don't leave uh, item lists in their descriptions or anywhere in the fucking video. That's so fun. I can't tell which Dude, dispensers and droppers look way too similar. I'm gonna just make three of each. Hmm. I wonder. Okay, wow, there's a... Wow, there's actually... There's like a double slime chunk over here. And there's a triple one here, too. I was really hoping there would be like, like a 2x2 two two somewhere, but okay. I think if I do build a slime farm, which I'm going to have to at some point, I imagine, I'm going to actually start by just marking out the area. Okay, apparently it's already day 441. I thought I finished recording this on day 427. I guess it was 437, maybe? I have a lot of glass here, so I'm just going to use this. I think for the interior of this place, I might just be basic and just make the floor out of purely stone. Okay, now I think we need to start need to just start putting a lot of dirt in there. I mean, got some mud out of it. Clearly, this shovel's too efficient. You know, because I'm bored, let's give this thing a special name. Muddocks. Bollocks. There we go. How is... Why is this shit all over? I'm gonna head over here and actually turn on more of the dupers. That one right there is broken. I need to fix it sometime. I think it's been broken for hundreds of days, actually. I should probably fix these lights at some point. I might have too many dupers. I'm experiencing severe lag. Well then, it's been a few days of just mud farming. And we've got all this now. This is the most mud I think I've ever had at once. We have a lot of mud now, and we can use this mud. But we need to use it for terraforming this area I have in mind. But first, we need to dig it out. So let's do that. Now we're going pretty far out. And I think... This is probably far enough, actually. This shovel is probably gonna die. I need to refurbish the string factory. It was brilliant at the time I built it, and it's still really good now. 
but there's one problem. Most of the collection area is still dirt. I am going to make other additions to it later, but I just want that dirt removed. Okay, second of all, this whole thing needs refurbishment. This was built on like... When was this built? I think the first thing I worked on, maybe... What, what, what was the first thing I worked on in episode 3? Like, maybe around day uh, 100, maybe? Maybe around there? Anyway, the water was the only thing keeping mobs from spawning. Oh my god! There are so many mobs! Oh, I just realized I just broke the iron farm. Oh, fuck. Oh, all this decoration is gonna have to go away. Yeah, it looks like the new collection system is pretty much done. Obviously, I kind of wanted that all that dirt down there to be replaced with stone, but I really don't have time for that. So I just focus on rebuilding the collection area. And I think the new one turned out a lot better than the old one, so it's a win. We did it. The first layer is cleared. Gotta do this like four more times though. So I just bought some more shovels because I need to look, I need to get a big area. I've got these, they're all efficiency four, so is this one. I think this should be good enough. pit is done. Wow, isn't that crazy? We dug out the pit. We now have a, a lot of mud to place. Oh boy. And we're, f we're five days away from day 500. Wow. So yeah, this chest has had a good amount of mud in it for a while. There's actually more at the mud farm and also in the neighboring village. I need to go get all that and put it in here. Honestly, none of that's going to be enough to fill in this. We're gonna have to get more later. Grass is also now my most mined block. I can now pretty much begin placing down all the mud. Obviously, I don't have enough, but we have a lot, so let's get started. Okay, wanted tea, my man. Please have something good. I am begging you. <gasps> oh, this is awesome! I don't really need red sand, but I'm going to take it anyway. So, as you just saw, I placed, like, a ton of mud. And, uh, yeah, that wasn't enough. It was, like, that was, like, 3,000 blocks. I need around 10 to 20,000. But that mud converter I have, oh, it's bad. Yeah, I'm going to be honest, it's not a good design. It really only works when you like first finish setting it up. And I mean, I need to get a new farm going. I found a tutorial for one. It looks pretty good. We're gonna go with that design because I really don't feel like finding another one. So as you can see, we're back at the ruins. And although I do have more mud to place, it's not in here. And that's because I first need to move all this stuff back over to my base and also duplicate these saplings so that way I don't run out easily. I also just need that chest there to be empty. So, let's head back to base. Okay. We, I think, the cherry wood is successfully safe. We've got a couple logs. Not as many as dark oak, but that's okay. 
Okay, so in terms of progress on the ruins, we're preparing to place more mud. This is gonna be fun. Definitely. Okay, so I can't actually find any footage of me placing down mud that time, but I did find footage of me farming mud, so here's a new farm I use for actually the rest of the video. Something I'm also gonna do later is just actually completely rebuild this wall here, because this is a factory. Factories having like big things of glass like this, I don't think they would do that. I think they would just have some like railings or something that's very easy to fall in. Maybe some glass like along here or here could say, but like, yeah, no, this whole, this centered thing in the middle, it needs to be rebuilt. I'd also like to point out how if we go inside here, there's still a lot of this redstone here. You probably don't know what it does, and I don't blame you. This redstone here was built here originally so that way I could try and activate all the dupers in one go. But yeah, it didn't work in the end, and I just kind of scrapped the whole idea. So yeah. I didn't really bother to get rid of most of the redstone, so yeah, now it's just kind of here. And to get around this all, I, you have to jump, and you risk falling in. And you know what, that's, it's very industrial, but I don't like falling in water. I'm the dictator, I can't be humiliating myself by falling into water. That would be preposterous. I also want to talk about the top of this place, it's, it's kind of a mess. As you can see, this here, I can place a block in it normally, and it won't be floating. You can see if I place a block here, it's floating. If I place it here, it's not floating. But since the block here is now floating, that means that all this, all these blocks here, they can be spawned on by literally anything. Well, by that I mean mobs, but still. Mobs can spawn on here to prevent that spammed torches everywhere. But this looks stupid. I don't like this. So yeah, we need to fix the roof of this place at some point. So I'm probably about to cut to another montage of me just, you know, placing mud. Because I know you guys don't want to see that. But it's time for us to do something stupid. So normally here I would just cut to another montage of me placing mud. And I don't, uh, I don't show you guys the mud farming by the way because I know you don't want to see it. It's tedious, mundane, boring. I hate doing it and... I know you guys don't want to watch it, so I don't show it. So we need to do something stupid and kind of funny uh, every now and then. As such, we're here in the never again, and I need to farm more mud. But before we do that, around here, I get I think it was sometime like episode two, so like really early on. That's a skeleton. Yeah, as you can see, there's a villager down there, and I don't know when that villager got into it never. But he definitely did get in here at some point. I have no idea how he got here. He's just been chilling there. I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna make him stay there. And you know what? I have been naming him for mine. I've been calling him that in my head for the past few months. Again, I still have no idea how he got here. I guess it was like some time when I was building the Never Hub. Yeah, probably. Anyway, sir. So, I have a name in mind for you, and you know what, I think it fits you. I'm going to call you, The Dutchman. And the reason why I'm calling him, The Dutchman, is because, you know, he's been living here in the never for a while, and what country in real life has a name that sounds like never? Why, the Netherlands, of course. So I, I loaded up the world and just needed to do more mud farming, but then I was like, no, that's stupid. So instead, we're going to procrastinate and instead rebuild parts of the uh, string factory because this factory is, well, it has problems. I fixed some of them earlier, but yeah, it's still, it's still not in great, it's not, it's not in great shape, I'm going to be honest. So how are we going to get started? Well, using my Silk Touch pickaxe here, we're gonna begin just by tearing down all these walls here. And the reason for this is because these glass walls just don't really make any sense in the context of this world. Like, 
big factories wouldn't have just glass walls protecting their workers. They would have just like railings. Like, I'll keep glass down there, but like, otherwise, we we really should not be having this much glass here. This is a big waste of glass, I'm gonna be honest. All this glass here is very expensive. And we're gonna hold on to it for future projects. I also just wanna rework parts of this uh, place so that way it should just doesn't look so dated. Yeah, all right, okay, we got two of the walls down, we need to do the other two now. Okay, I'm gonna need a little bit of stone. And, uh, yeah, I've done some things with the, uh, Shrimp Factory's interior. So as you saw, I think previously, was it in this episode? I don't remember. But... At some point, I actually replaced a floor here with uh, stone bricks. And now it's just because before it was just a mix of dirt and stone and path blocks. Now we have just stone bricks and also some rest of lamps in there. So that way, I can actually work around here without worrying about mob spawning. I also installed this, so when I flip up all the switches... The water is completely locked in, and the entire reason this feature here exists is quite literally just for easier maintenance. Because before I would have to take two water buckets and collect all the water of it just for maintenance. And then when I was done with the maintenance, I'd have to put it all back. It's very inconvenient and it wastes a lot of time. So I have now industrialized it, and there's now a trapdoor system that keeps all the water back for when I need to do maintenance. The redstone lamps also help with this, making sure no mobs spawn when I'm trying to do said maintenance, because before when there were no redstone lamps, the thing that was keeping mobs from spawning was literally just the water collection system itself. But now I don't have to worry about mobs spawning down there at all because of the lamps. So instead of having those old ta that old tacky staircase, there's now just ladders on both sides. I've also just put fences everywhere. Just because, well, again, be since the old redstone is now actually all destroyed, I want there to at least be fences around so that way it actually feels like a working area. And now you know someone you're dancing around. So I was filming a short, and this dude shows up with moss. Gladly taking that. So I decided to just finally go ahead and install a mod that essentially allows me to create backpacks because I don't have access to shulkers on this world because due to some wacky shit early on in the world, the stronghold will not generate. Because of that, I can't get shulkers. What I can, though, is get backpacks via the power of modding. In either way, I still intend to keep this series pretty vanilla. Like, I've most of the mods I've added are mostly just quality of life or shaders. But this is really the first truly, like, exclusively modded thing. Thankfully, to make a backpack, all the resources were completely accessible and super flat. So I was able to get four backpacks. I'm probably going to have to make more of those soon because uh, I actually did. These four did not. They did not give me enough space. I also moved later and installed a craftable Elytra mod because, you know, in any other case, I would consider it cheating. But this is a special occasion. So yeah. I had to make a mob farm to get some quick copper. I still use this farm actually every now and then just get some extra gunpowder. So yeah, if you see me using an elytra from here on out, that's why. The bottom layer of the ruins is finally complete. This is the biggest layer. And I'm gonna be honest, this is painful. How many blocks have I placed of mud now? Nearly 18,000! Thankfully for the next few layers, they're actually going to be mostly filled with water, and also the central structure and a bunch of like mangrove trees later. So, all the other layers from here on out should be significantly less mentally painful. Hey, Editor Bolton here. It was at this point in the recording I decided that, you know, I would just record all the mud placing with replay mod because really, how I make that interesting? Yeah, exactly. I really can't. So yeah. I recorded all the mud placing through replay mod, and a lot of actually building for the main thing in the center as well. 
Earlier, I was grinding away at the mud farm, getting the final few pieces of mud that I would need. And then a creeper comes up behind me, and boom, I'm dead. The mud farm is partially blown up, and it actually doesn't work now. So that's... Oh my god. Yeah, I definitely overprepared, but... I'm done. At least with the mud part. Yeah. It's done. 32,000. Oh my god. That is the most mud I've ever built out of. And it's only going to get higher from here. Oh, my poor shovel. Oh, my poor, poor shovel. Alright. However, with that, the big and scary part of this project is finally complete. This means we can actually now move on to the next part of it. Which includes actually building the centerpiece itself. And after that, it's just some simple decorating and flooding the actual pit itself. And then, we'll finally be able to be finished with this episode. I do have more plans for the ruins in the future. However, for now, we do have... We're just going to be building this centerpiece here. And it's already taken me ages. Like, hundreds of days. Now, I was considering just making an episode here. And just calling this the ruins part one. But literally spending months on just a pit, it's probably going to be really short for you guys because I want to make my video shorter. So this is not really all that impressive. Like, what would you call the video? Just like, oh, I made a big boy pit. No, that that that's stupid. Yeah, so yeah, we're going to finish at least the centerpiece of the ruins here. And then we're going to be able to, uh, yeah, we're finally able to build the city. I wouldn't use this time in the video to talk about what the centerpiece is actually going to be. It's actually going to be a recreation, or it's a smaller version, of my first ever Superfly base. It was never finished because that world unfortunately corrupted. And because that world corrupting, I made my second Superfly world ever. This one. And I want to memorialize my old base somehow. So, I created the ruins. It's going to later be a lot bigger, but again we're just working on the centerpiece here. And I decided to just make this look abandoned, you know? Make it really fit with the vibe. just saw in that reaper mod footage we have finally completed this it this has been months in the making and you know what this project definitely looks great with shaders i love this that being said we are now finished with this project and that brings episode six of the flat world to an end so everyone thank you so much for watching i'm bolton for voltage productions goodbye